But in many respects, game A, kind of the way we have always done things as humans, uh, can be seen as playing the finite game, right? Versus game B, which is arguably the infinite game. James Cass's book, Finite and Infinite Games, which introduced and, and socialized the concepts. And actually, I think Simon Sinek uh, is just about to come out with another book by that title. A slightly different emphasis, but yeah, the idea of um, if a finite game is basically win-lose, and, and it's I, and arguably might makes right, then the infinite game is, is the anti-rivalrous version, potentially win-win. Uh, the aim is, is right, you know, basically just power makes might. And the purpose of the infinite game is not winner takes all. The purpose of the infinite game is to create conditions by which we all get to keep playing it. And so in some simple sense, if that's an analogy that maybe people are familiar with, you know, we can think of game A to game B in, in those terms. And so as we look around for examples, we think, oh, well, bloody hell, you know, <laughs> like evolutionary biology, that's a big weight. Game theory, that's really hard to, to beat. Um, and so we've got to have something, if this is going to persist, if this is going to work, we have to have a mode of coherence or, you know, what, again, Daniel and Jordan, they've got so many great neologisms, what they might call a strong attractor, right, it has to be stronger than ego and ethnocentrism because that's what we're encoded to do. So again, to, to, and if anybody hasn't seen uh, Brett Weinstein and his wife, Heather Hang, who's also an evolutionary biologist, they did a brilliant interview with Joe Rogan where they discuss gender and they discuss all these things, but they wind it all the way back to like mating habits of birds and all these kinds of things. And they say, hey, look, before we get into sociopolitical, you know, tirades against each other, let's just look back at what are the foundational substrates that have always been. And let's take a look at that and say what are deep structures versus what are shallower social structures. Which is something that Brett and Eric have said, that our evolutionary toolkit, that's what we have to build with. We, yeah. we can't start from anywhere other than what's hardwired into us. Yeah, and, and anybody that's holding out solutions for us in this day and age that are aspirational, right, that are very much relying on the better angels of our nature, as it were, um, that is fragile as fuck. You know, the moment, you know, Mike Tyson's 101, everybody's got a plan until you get hit, right? Everybody's got a better angel until they get bitch slapped. And so the trick is, is how do we create conditions to play the infinite game together when things aren't optimal? And, you know, the good news is that I think we don't actually have to start from scratch. And many of the building blocks are sort of staring us in the face. And weirdly, it's sort of if we can go in, go into the burning house fire that are the sort of uh, culture wars right now and realize that in fact we have been inching our way towards the infinite game for some time and it is arguably the western tradition my, my i guess my question at this point is how is this related to the war on sense making why is sense making infinite in because it was in in daniel's explanation as well we get we ended up in the same territory but we got there through sense making yes. why are those two things linked well, I mean, my sense is, is that the only way we share information is electively um, or with agenda. So the question is, is what would inspire or motivate us to be both truthful and true, to be open book and transparent with each other? And that fundamentally requires trust and that fundamentally requires an alignment of motive and some sense of shared outcomes. As long as there's an us, them, as long as there's a win-lose, as long as there's a rivalrous dynamic, we will continue peeing in the pool of the information ecosystem, unintentionally and intentionally. And so we will never clean that up. The only way we can say is don't file our own nest and we actually all sleep together. And so how do we, ad how do we address those things and agree to open source a thriving and vibrant information ecology on behalf of effectively, you know, the old Bodhisattva 101, all sentient beings.